I think we are really at an exciting stage in the field of pathology. I've been doing pathology for a very long time, and in particular doing only breast pathology for about the last 12 years or so. And the technology that's become available now will really revolutionize how we practice. Um, we're moving toward digitization of glass slides. And to me, there are many important features about using digitized slides, but one of them is that they're amenable to evaluation by uh, AI algorithms. And AI algorithms superimposed on digital slides or whole slide images in combination with a pathologist's review of these cases will provide far better diagnoses and far better care than either a pathologist alone or AI alone. So AI is going to be a critical adjunct to diagnostic surgical pathology going forward in virtually every field. Already, it's been shown to be a value in prostate cancer and more recently breast cancer. And AI can do a bunch of things that pathologists can't do. It can do some things better than pathologists can do, and it can provide information that pathologists can't provide based on analysis of the features of H&E stain sections alone. How can AI help in the practice of breast pathology? Well, first, it can help streamline workflow and improve turnaround time. Just imagine a scenario where the digitized slides are scanned by a slide scanner, an AI algorithm is run on your breast cases, and then you get your cases the next morning, you get a queue of your cases prioritized uh, in terms of their importance, in terms of their diagnoses or potential diagnoses, so that you can address them uh, in that order. Imagine being in a scenario where the AI algorithm is able to identify invasive breast cancers and pre-order ER, PR, and HER2 immunostains to save the time and improve the turnaround of those stains. Imagine a scenario where the AI algorithm can not only tell you whether or not there's a cancer there, but what type of cancer it is, what the grade of the cancer is, whether or not there's lymphovascular invasion or tumor infiltrating lymphocytes and other features of the cancer. And you may think that this is sort of Star Wars science fiction, but we're actually here now. Uh, IBEX has developed an incredible system called the Galen system to evaluate breast cancers. There was a recent study that was presented at the 2022 USCAP meeting, which was a study from two institutions, Institut Curie in Paris and Maccabi Health Services in Israel. And in that study, they took uh, breast cases that had been stained in a routine manner at each of those institutions with different kinds of stains, H&E at Maccabi, HES, hematoxylon, ES and saffron at Curie. The slides were scanned with two different scanners and the algorithm was applied to these uh, um, slides and the ability of the algorithm to detect invasive cancers in DCIS was absolutely remarkable. The area under the curve for detection of invasive cancer was 0.99. You could say, well, it's not one, but it's pretty close. And the uh, AUC for detection of DCIS was 0.98. Now, the other important thing to recognize about this algorithm is how it was developed. So this algorithm, algorithm was developed based on the uh, scanning and uh, analysis of 2 million images that were really uh, carefully annotated by experienced pathologists. So uh, this manual annotation by experienced pathologists is absolutely critical in the validity of this algorithm. And I think this gives it even more credibility um, when you think about the data and put it in context. Another feature of the uh, Galen breast algorithm uh, was demonstrated in the presentation that Dr. Anne Vincent Salomon gave uh, at the USCAP meeting, which made it clear that not only can uh, the algorithm detect invasive cancers with a high degree of accuracy, but it can also distinguish among different subtypes of cancer, in particular, separating ductal and lobular cancers. Now, why is that important in a core needle biopsy? Well, you know, especially for patients with larger tumors, they're often treated with neoadjuvant chemotherapy. But we do know now from many clinical trials that patients with invasive lobular carcinoma don't respond very well to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So if 
an algorithm and a pathologist can determine for sure that the tumor is of lobular type, the clinicians may consider that the patient may not be a good candidate for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. In addition, the algorithm can detect special type cancers that are of favorable prognosis, such as tubular carcinoma and mucinous carcinoma. It can detect metaplastic carcinomas and other special type breast cancers. So this algorithm can do more than just identify invasive breast cancers. It can stratify them into cancers that we know have different prognostic significance. Another great advantage of the AI algorithm is it can not only detect cancers and DCIS, but it can detect other features like calcifications. And we all know as pathologists that if a biopsy is done for calcifications and we can't find them, then we need to order additional levels. But we can have the AI algorithm run on these cases, and if no calcifications are detected, those additional levels are pre-ordered, again, uh, speeding up the process and improving turnaround time. Since at least the 1940s or 1950s, there have been a variety of new technologies that have been introduced into the practice of surgical pathology. In the 1950s, it was enzyme histochemistry. In the 1960s, electron microscopy. In the 1980s, immunohistochemistry. In the 2000s, molecular. Many of those uh, new technologies were touted as being the end-all be-all and something that's going to replace pathologists. I remember in the early 2000s when people at the U.S. National Cancer Institute were saying that molecular classification of cancers will replace pathologists in classifying cancers. Now, has that happened? Absolutely not. But has it changed the practice of pathology forever? Absolutely because the combination of standard pathology and molecular diagnostics has made us better pathologists, be able to better classify tumors, and in turn, be able to better treat patients. And I believe the exact same thing is gonna happen with digital pathology and artificial intelligence. AI uh, has been introduced into pathology, but it's also been introduced into other areas of medicine, in particular radiology. And I've heard both radiologists and pathologists say that AI is going to replace them. But I think that's totally untrue, and I think it's a very narrow way of looking at what AI can do in both pathology and radiology. And instead of radiologists and pathologists being replaced by AI, what I think will probably happen is that pathologists and radiologists who use AI will replace pathologists and radiologists who don't use AI because it's clear that AI will become integrated into our daily workload and will make us just better and more efficient at what we do.